In this video, we are going to look at a question that I posed on social media, and a friend of mine wrote a response, and uh, it was it was a long one, and it it's a common thing that I've heard a lot of times, and I thought, you know, why don't I not only just type out a response uh, to my friend, but why don't I also address it for anyone else who might be interested in the perspective that I have on it, which could be wrong. Um, but, but I'm going to try to go through this and kind of think through things as I go along. And I'll be looking down at my notes and uh, we'll see if I can kind of stay on track and make this not too long and hit the important points and uh, see if my thinking is on track or if it's irrational, illogical in any way. And if, if either of those things happen, please call me out on it in the notes. Um, if you just disagree and don't have a good reason uh, or you just are really stuck on what you learned in grade school or something like that, then I, I wouldn't be as interested in that. But if, if you have a good intellectual argument, I'd be very interested in hearing that. So here goes. Um, I, we were talking about uh, the original post was uh, saying that taxation is theft. Um, uh, is there any other explanation? Like, is there any way that it could not be theft? And my friend wrote and said, yeah, it's not. And the reason is um, his, his arguments for why it is not are that we the people uh, decided that we were going to have a government in I'm assuming the uh, late 1700s and we formed some documents some paperwork uh, when I say we I, I'm using his terminology um, we the people formed that uh, document paperwork we the people sent uh, representatives to do all of the actual work and decision making, but they are representatives. They are our representatives. We get to elect them and uh, we get to send them to uh, represent us in government meetings. And and then that, that continues to say that, that if you don't like something that they are doing, then the system is set up so that you just you change them out. Um, we the people can say, oh, we don't like the idea that such and such is happening. And I, I'm putting some words in his mouth here, but by through democracy or mob rule, if 51% of us or 66 or whatever, the, the majority, supermajority, whatever, if we, the people who are in the majority, decide that the representatives uh, should do something different, then we can either tell them we want them to do something different, or if they don't do that, then we can elect new people that will do what we want, what we the majority want. And I think that's in a nutshell, um, his, his initial argument. And as I go along, I'll kind of add more things um, to make sure that I'm representing his point fairly. The we the people thing to start with, that's an abstraction. There's, there's no real such thing. Um, we the people refers to some people many hundreds of years ago. And this kind of takes us to the basics of contract law. Um, and there are certain elements that must be necessary for a contract to be valid. And I'm not just saying the law that was created by the United States government or some other government, but human creditors throughout the world, various governments, various legal systems uh, have kind of come to some, some generally accepted rules of making contracts. And some of those rules are that, that they can't be under duress. Like it's not a valid contract. If you hold a knife to somebody's throat and say, I want these elements inside the, or the, these parts inside the uh, contract. And if you don't sign it, I'll slit your throat. So it can't be under duress. Um, the people who are agreeing to the contract have to be of an age that they can kind of understand things. They have to be of a mental state. Um, so they can't be mentally retarded with an IQ of 52 and sign a you know, $10 million purchase of a company agreement. They're, they're not considered mentally proficient enough to do that. And the same thing would be if someone was really under the influence of something. Uh, you go get somebody really, really drunk. You can't buy their house for a dollar from them while they're in that uh, state that isn't a good state or a sane state. Um, it's generally a good idea to have a date. It's a good idea to have penalties if either party doesn't follow through with a contract. And maybe the penalty is just, hey, this thing is null and void if either party doesn't follow the rules. Um, 
And so, so then another element is it, it has to be between parties who have, what's it called? It's called jurisdiction or have a right to be involved in it. So in other words, my neighbor to the right and my neighbor to the left and I, the three of us, we can't get together and sign a contract that binds the person across the, the street from us. Even though there are three of us and one of them, the person has to say, that they agree, like they have to voluntarily agree to participate in this contract and to the terms of it. And yeah, and this, so that kind of goes also with like parents and children and grandparents and ancestors. Um, you know, if you find something from 10,000 years ago that says that uh, my great, 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 great grandfather said that his great, 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 great grandson um, owed you a million bucks and they signed it way back then, that's like, that's not something I agreed to. You can't sign a contract on somebody else's behalf unless they have said um, that you've done your own contract that says, I hereby say that Bill is my representative and Bill and I will both sign this and now he can be my representative or my agent. Well, that's the, that's the problem with the idea that a, few, a couple, a few hundred years ago, a few people, a very small percentage of the total people alive, could form a contract that would bind me over 200 years later if I didn't agree to this contract. That isn't really, like, that's not possible. It's just, it's, it's just using reason and law, uh, the tradition of law. You, you, that's just not a valid contract. It's not a valid deal. So, so that idea doesn't really hold up that we, the people, um, decided what form our government would take, blah, blah, blah. And this is a very popular thing. With an overwhelming majority of the people agree, we want roads, we want, um, you know, to burn virgins so that it will rain or whatever the majority of people, um, whether they come to these decisions or, or this, this overwhelming majority of what they want, if they come to that through their own desires, or if they've been watching, uh, you know, legacy media, they've been watching Fox News and CNBC and CNN and whatever they're telling them, they're, oh, okay, I believe that that's happening. And the government's made up of good people and there are a few bad eggs in there and it ain't perfect. But overall, people who get into government just want to help other people and they want to make the world a better place. So there's that narrative that in most elementary, and I probably on that, but elementary school civics classes, the textbooks in there will say that, and they'll say the Federal Reserve is to make sure that there's a proper monetary supply and there isn't inflation or deflation. And, and so a little research into less, well, I, I would say stuff that the government doesn't put out, but stuff that independent people put out who aren't tied to the government or funded by the government. If we look into some of those things, we go, wow, there are really some very different perspectives from people about how the Federal Reserve came about, how the government came about, what role does the media play in uh, in the world, uh, what, what role do large uh, educational institutions, colleges and such, what role do they play? And this is referred to in the book, uh, The New Right, and, and other places as well, as the cathedral, this, this combination of various entities who kind of make stuff run, um, who, who kind of control what's going to go, what's going to go on in the world. So I, I'm just seeing, I'm putting all of this together and, I, and I'm saying no, even if it was a completely innocent thing and the, the, the people two, 300 years ago really did have my best interest in mind and they were trying to sign contracts for me. That's just, I mean, taking a step back from what we were taught in school, you, you can't do that. Like I can't sign a contract for somebody 200 years from now. Um, that that doesn't work. They have to voluntarily agree to enter into that contract themselves. And almost all contracts have outs. Um, there are ways to get out of it if you don't like it. A marriage contract, well, there's a divorce option. Yeah, if you marry a sociopath and this thing's going horribly and they're beating you, there's a way to get out of it. If you buy a house and you're not making payments, there's a way to get out of it. You get kicked out, you move, you, you change stuff. Um, so, the, so these contracts are all ways to get out and you agree to those ways when you sign the original contract. Um, and then there were some uh, respectfully disparaging things said about uh, Lysander Spooner. Um, 
some of the things like, you know, he should act on what he says, not just write about it. And, and he did in many ways. He was a, an abolitionist uh, in the 1800s. He was an attorney. And so he worked hard to um, help slaves get away from being slaves. Um, he worked hard for that and spoke out a lot against it. Uh, another thing he did is he didn't like the monopoly that government had on uh Postal service. As a matter of fact, little known fact, it is illegal to start a postal service sending letters. Um, you're not allowed to do that. Um, only the United States government is allowed to have a post office, and that's been a rule for a long time. So sometime in the 1800s, Lysander said, you know what, I'm going to challenge this. And so he started up his own post office. And you can read about that. Um, but he started it up to compete with the government monopoly. And of course, they didn't care for that. But that was an interesting thing. So I would say that the guy did stand up for what he believed in and, and put his uh, put his actions where his, his mouth was. Um, and then for people like me who see a problem in society and we say, hey, that's a that's a problem. You know, people shouldn't steal from each other. They shouldn't rape each other. They shouldn't, you know, kill each other other than in defense. And when we see problems like that and we point them out, um, it's a way uh, the, the comment here was uh, rather than doing something, we're just kind of saying that, you know, we're voicing our dissension and our division. And I very much want to divide good people who have peaceful values, peaceful morals. That's what they care about. I want to divide them from mean psychopathic gangs, whether those gangs call themselves mafias or governments or whatever. Um, there's a subjective preference that I have for peacefully interacting with others, having everything be voluntary. And yeah, I, I'm, I, I would definitely say yes. I'm trying to say um, I do not give my consent. Uh, here's a voice of dissent. I, I do not agree with bad things that are happening. Um, and, and I don't, you know, there's, there's a thing that's often said, well, just move. You know, if you don't like getting carjacked, um, then you don't deserve to be in that city. You need to get rid of your house and your whole life and your job and your family, and you need to go to some place where there aren't as many carjackings. That's not a good argument. Um, and this isn't the argument my friend made. And to be fair, this is just a common one that comes up around about this time in these conversations. Um, but no, it's not incumbent upon the victim not to go to a place. Um, but you know, the victim shouldn't go onto a bad guy's property. So that that would make sense. Yeah, if you Go on to bad George's property. George is going to steal from you. Okay, don't go on his property anymore. Um, but when you're out in some place that isn't his property, then yeah, you you aren't the one that should leave. Um, there was a further suggestion here about, um, I know many like Mr. Spooner's philosophy, so it would not be difficult for him to raise the money necessary to purchase a significant land mass and all who agree with him go there and live under his theories of governing or lack thereof. No, there, there isn't a significant land mass that uh, uh, there isn't a government in control of. So if we just took the, the United States and you look at one of the states that has more rural area, Nevada, uh, if, you, if you went out and you bought a bunch of sections there, you bought a little corner of the state or a little, little oasis there that you were gonna make your libertarian area and not have rules you, like you could paint your fence any color you wanted you could build a house or build a shed or get married and drive a car and go to the grocery store and have stuff shipped in and sell things and not be taxed and not be told what to do and it was more of a free kind of thing well there isn't a place that you can do that that i'm aware of anywhere in the world um, so even if it was incumbent upon the victim to move um, there isn't a place for the victim to move. So the best that a victim can do is say, well, I'm born here. I'm on land that I peacefully and voluntarily acquired. I'm, I'm renting this apartment where I'm, I've purchased this house or this farm, and, and I'm just trying to live my life and be productive and exchange what I produce for things that I value. Um, th there isn't really another option other than saying, hey, uh, you know, I'm, I've been thinking about this stuff and I think it's wrong. What do the rest of you think? And kind of putting it out there. I, and I don't know, maybe there are better ways. Um, a, a better way is certainly not thinking that the system, the government system is going to work. Governments and mafias will 
certainly write down or verbally tell people what they believe people should fall for or, or do. And so a, a government or a mafia could say, by the way, you have to pay us a hundred bucks a month. Every shopkeeper has to pay us a hundred bucks a month and we won't come break your legs. And that, that can be said. They can even have a meeting in a big fancy room and they can say it was ratified by all the gangsters or all the, the senators or whatever. And, and they all agree that abortion is now a, a good idea. And as a matter of fact, anybody who's not married um, or who isn't attractive should be forced to have an abortion. And if the representatives all say that, it's going to take a few years to, even if the whole election system worked, it would take years to get them voted out. So th that's not really making sense, is it, for, for the moral person who says that uh, uh, subjectively moral, subject morality is subjective, in my opinion, and that's very different than I think my friend's standpoint. He comes from a theist standpoint. So it's a different system of coming up with what we ought to and what we ought to not do as, as humans, morality. But, but under that system of, of somebody saying you have to have an abortion, well, you have to let this person go into your body and kill that person that's inside of you. And well, that's what the law says. If you don't like it, change it. No, I, I don't go for that. Um, I don't think that's a moral good thing to do is to kill people who live inside other people. I think that's a bad thing to do. And I also think that stealing is a bad thing to do. And just because the people who would do these things say, oh, no, it's OK. We, we had a big meeting and we signed a bunch of paperwork and we're your representatives and we, we are representing you and we're you don't even have to worry about it. We're taking care of everything. And by the way, we're going to do these bad things. No matter how much pomp and circumstance is put behind these things uh, or, or what they say, it just doesn't cut it. Not not in a rational sense. Um, yeah, just, just, just doesn't work. So, um, no, that, that isn't, uh, any proof or evidence or good reasoning as to why taxation isn't theft. And I would suggest that if a person wants to argue with a, uh, a libertarian who says that taxation is theft, the libertarian might just be trying to trick you into something. Um, they might be trying to get you to go off on a tangent. Don't let them do that to you. You stick with the thing, taxation is theft. Well, if it isn't, tell them why. Look at theft, look at the definition of theft, look at what taxation is, and then say, is that, is that true? Seems to me that the intellectually honest thing to say is yes, taxation is theft, but as a believer in government or mafia or whatever, as a believer in a particular system, I choose I think that the things that they do are so good and the system is set up in such a way that I'm okay with theft happening. Or I don't even think human beings have rights. If 51% of people say they don't, they don't have the right to dissent or the, uh, if that's really truly what a person believes, then I think it would be very fair and good to say that. Just come out and say it. Um, taxation is theft, but I'm okay with theft. Because if theft is done for the things I want, that makes it okay. Or if a bunch of people a long time ago agreed that theft is okay, then it's okay. Those would be intellectually consistent things to say. Am I off base here? Have I missed something from a, a logic and reason standpoint? Now, I can't argue with our feelings or uh, hundreds of years of indoctrination into certain systems. I can't deal with that. But from a, a reason logic standpoint, am I, am I off base?